Welcome to the Luminous Program. My name is Father John Hibbard. I'm the pastor of Queen of the Most Holy Rosary Parish in Belleville, Ontario, part of the Archdiocese of Kingston in Canada. The talk today I would like to give is about the Trinity and the Eucharist, something we don't think about that much. But let us begin asking the invo invocation of God and his love upon us. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have revealed yourself to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the mystery of the Holy Trinity. We ask you to be with us, helping us always to enter more deeply into that mystery of your love and the relationship that there is between you and your Son and the Holy Spirit. And grant that as your Son died upon the cross and made us one with you through baptism, grant that we may live your life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The reading I would like to start with is taken from the 16th chapter of the Gospel of John. Jesus said to his disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Ever since I was a child, and I suspect it's the same for most of us, we were told that the Trinity is a mystery. And by that, I think people meant it's something we cannot understand. And all throughout Christian history, people have tried to explain that mystery to us. St. Patrick used the shamrock in a very famous way, trying to show the people of his time that there could be three and yet one. St. Augustine as a young, had a vision of a young lad walking along the beach one day. And he was thinking about the Trinity and he decided to take this break. And he ran across this small boy. And the small boy had a shell in his hand and he would take some water from the ocean into the shell, go up on the beach and pour it into a hole. And so when St. Augustine came up to him, he asked the young lad, what are you doing? And the young lad said, I'm going to pour all of the ocean into this hole. Well, St. Augustine looked at him and chuckled and said, that's impossible, you can't do that. And the little boy looked up at him and said, and neither can you understand the mystery of the Trinity. But yet, because it is a mystery, doesn't mean that there aren't some things we can understand. St. Thomas Aquinas helped us to understand the Trinity in terms of the relationship between the Father and the Son. Now, I think that's something we can relate to. We grow up in families and we know about relationships. And so he said, the Father is the person who loves. The Son is the one who is loved and the Holy Spirit is the love between them. And that love is so real that it is the third person of the Trinity. Well, I've always thought of the Trinity and relate it to the mystery of our families. Think how many people live in your family. Let's say there's five in your family. And yet we say there's one family and one household that is there, but of course, there are a number of individuals who live within that one family. Each of person is distinct and unique. Each person with their own qualities, each person with their own gifts and abilities as God has given it to them. And what is it that makes this family one? Is it not the love that people have? You know, I think we are, live in families because that's God's will for us. And we live in families because that's one way we reflect the Trinity. God could not love himself. That would be rather narcissistic, wouldn't it? And so there has to be an object of love. And it's the same thing for ourselves as well. We need an object of love. And that is why husband and wife come together and love each other. They become the object of their love but they also become the subject of love as well. And their love becomes so real that life is produced in that family. A living being comes into existence. 
And so they begin the process of a family. That has always helped me to think about the Trinity as well, as a family. Now, if we are a family, we are also a family of God as well. And that's an important concept for us to remember, that as we gather, we are God's family. The Second Vatican Council reminded us that even before we celebrate the Eucharist, as we gather as God's holy people, that we are the body of Christ, that we are God's family, God's people. We live in such an individualistic society that so often people tend to think of their relationship as God as something personal between them and God. And of course, it has to be personal, but it is also communal as well. It's important for us to recognize that when God revealed himself to the Jewish people, that they had a sense of community. They had a sense that they were the people of God. And we need to have that sense that we are God's holy family as well. And so we do not come to celebrate the Eucharist just as individuals, we come as family. And that means that there has to be interaction between us even before we start the formal celebration of the Eucharist. Perhaps that's why in so many parishes, Hospitality is such an important element. Why is that we make everyone feel they are part of the family, that they feel welcomed, that they feel loved. And then we become a sign to the world. And so the very first sign of God's presence among us is the church gathered as God's holy people. We gather here and hopefully the love and the faith that we share each other is something that supports us as well. The rituals that we go through in the Eucharist are important because they communicate that faith to one another. As we watch each other come into the church, dip our hand in the holy water and make the sign of the cross, we're telling other people that we believe and that that is a Trinitarian action because we were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And as we enter into the church and we reverence the Holy Eucharist and reverence the altar, that is also communicating faith as well. We're telling other people we share the same values, that we believe in the presence of God, in the presence especially of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. And then we are ready to begin the solemn celebration. The priest, of course, becomes another symbol for us of the presence of God among us. And so the Word of God continues that. And all of this is like a stepladder. Each step brings us closer to God until we come to that ultimate moment when we believe that Jesus is present in the bread and the wine that is transformed into his body and into his blood. And so we gather at the altar. Why? Because we are a family. And when is family most family? Is it not when we gather around the kitchen or the dinner table? That's when we really are together. Otherwise, we might be in different rooms, we have different occupations. Some go to school, some go to work, some work around the house. All of these things keep us busy, but it's when we come together that we're able to support one another. I think that's why family time and meal time is so important to the life of the family, but it's also so important to our faith life as well, that we gather together not just to eat quickly and go off again, but we come together in a ritual, that we pray thanking God for what he has given to us, and that as we eat, we also share with one another. And so it's more than just eating. As someone once said, there's a big difference between eating and dining. When you think of dining, you might think of some special occasion, when there might be a nice tablecloth on the altar, when candles are lit, when there's a festive atmosphere. That's what we are called to do. Otherwise, the Eucharist becomes like fast food. We come in, we don't talk to anybody, and then we go home. We have not really opened our heart to the fullness of God's presence because we have to do that. It isn't automatic. And so we pray that as a family, we may come to recognize God's presence among us. And so the Trinity is very important because that's what we are called to live. When you stop and think of the Eucharist, we are uniting ourselves to Christ over and over again. So it's not like when we come into church that Christ is absent. No, he's with us. 
We might say that why do we bother celebrating the Eucharist if Christ is already with us? Because we have to deepen our relationship with him and we need his additional strength. We need to remember, we need to celebrate, we need to hear the word of God that calls us to be a holy people. In other words, we need that renewal that comes every Sunday to celebrate the Eucharist. And so as we eat the body of Jesus and drink his blood, Jesus is renewed within us so that we can go forth out into the world to bring him there, so that all that we celebrate is really what we bring to the world. And so there's this connection. And so by eating the body of Jesus and we become closer to him and are one with him, we are also closer to the mystery of the Trinity. In other words, Jesus is inserting us into this love of the Father and himself by the power of the Holy Spirit. And what a great mystery that is. I think one of the things we often forget is about the role of the Holy Spirit in the Eucharist as well. The Holy Spirit comes and makes God present to us. And so part of our atmosphere of prayer has to be an openness to this Holy Spirit, asking him to move our hearts and minds and to inspire us with the word of God. My experience as a priest giving a homily is that lots of people hear different things. I've had people stop me at the back of the church and say, Father, what you said about this topic was wonderful. And I start thinking, did I even talk about that? So what I say is inspired, I hope, by the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit is also working in the listeners so that they hear something. And usually they hear what they need to hear and what God wants them to hear. And so let us invoke the Holy Spirit. Yes, we focus on Jesus, on his body and his blood, but let us remember the gift that he gave us. And so every time that Jesus broke bread with his disciples and every time that he gave himself to them in the Eucharist, he was constantly reminding them of the words that we read today. I have a lot to say to you, but you cannot remember it all now. And so every Sunday at the Eucharist, Jesus is giving us more of what he said so that we can remember, so that the Holy Spirit can work in us. Let us pray. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, O Lord, as we celebrate the Eucharist, and grant that we may hear your word with open hearts, and that we may even allow that word to challenge us. We know that many times there are words that console us, but there may be times that challenge us as well. Help us to invoke the Holy Spirit so that your real presence among us may bring about a transformation in our hearts and in our minds. And then may we go out with the Holy Spirit, using the gifts that he has given to us in confirmation, in order that we may bring peace and justice to the world. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. pleased to offer my prayerful support and blessings for Shalom World Media and for all of those that support it, for all of those that, this, that work in this beautiful ministry of bringing Christ in, into our lives. So may the blessings of the All Holy Trinity be upon you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen.